Okay, so welcome back. So last time I left you, uh, we have our little board here that uh, is capable of detecting when it's deadlocked, but just because it knows when it's deadlocked doesn't mean that's useful information necessarily. We want it to be able to do something about the deadlock. Um, so like here, deadlocked, deadlocked. So it knows it's deadlocked. We want it to be able to do something. So I'm going to come up with a way that we can shuffle our board. Uh, if you wanted to, you could just like reload the scene, or you could just destroy every piece on the board and then just make a new board, um, and then just keep doing that until it's not deadlocked anymore. I th I'm not a huge fan of doing it that way because your player might have pieces on the board that they like, like they might have some bombs on there, and if you just destroy all the pieces and then reload the board, uh, they're losing those bombs. So that's not necessarily the best thing to do. Um, I like the idea of just taking the existing pieces and swapping them around. So that's how I'm going to do my shuffle. All right. So first things first, we're going to open up our board script. Uh, where we left off, down here we had our is deadlocked was the last method. Near this, I'm going to add my new method to uh, shuffle the board. And this is going to be a void. And I don't need it from anywhere other than this uh, script. So I'm going to make it private. So private void shuffle board. So the basic logic behind this is I'm going to create a list of current um, pieces that are on the board. And I'm going to add every single piece to that list. And then once I have everything on the list, I'm going to go through them and pick a random piece to put in each spot. Then once I've got that done, I'll check the board if it's deadlocked again. And if it's deadlocked again, I will recursively call this method, which is something that generally you want to be careful about. In this case, I don't think it's going to cause any problems, but recursively calling a method could create an infinite loop. So generally you want to be a little cautious when you're calling a method from itself, which is the word for that is recursion. So like it's like a Matryoshka doll those Russian nesting dolls where you got a method inside a method inside a method where it's calling itself again and again and again, it could cause trouble. Anyway, I don't know if that made any sense at all. Okay, so um, let's just walk through the steps here. So first I'm going to create a list of game objects. So list of game objects, and I'm going to call this um, new board. And this is a new, no, 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 no. You have a keyword. This is a new list of game objects. Now I'm going to add every piece to this list. So for integer i equals zero, i is less than width, i, oops, i plus plus. And then for integer j equal to zero, j is less than height, j plus plus. Um, first, I'm going to check to make sure that that's not null. So if all dots ij is not null, because we have those blank spaces now, and I don't want to be adding a null piece to my list, um, then I'm going to new board dot add. And what do I want to add? I want to add all dots ij. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I need to do. That's going to populate my list with every piece that's currently on the board. So now, what I want to do with this new list is I want to, for every spot on the board, so again, I'm going to do my double for loop again. So for integer i equals 0, i is less than width, i plus plus. Integer j is 0, j is less than height, j plus plus. So I'm going to look at every spot on the board. And I'm going to, um, if this spot shouldn't be blank, so if, call it blank spaces? Yeah, if blank spaces, ij. So these are true false values. So if blank spaces, so if not blank spaces, ij. So if that's false, meaning it shouldn't be a blank space, then I'm going to create a random integer, p 
take a random number. So integer piece to use, random dot range. And the range I want to pick is between zero and however long my list is. So new board dot count. It's dot length with an array and dot count with a list because two different things were added to dot net C sharp at different times. And so whoever was doing it just decided to do their own thing. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm picking a random number and I'm going to say uh, new board and I want to grab that random number piece to use dot uh, oh I want to get its piece so I'm going to actually make a quick little container here for the piece instead of just the game object so I'm going to say um, dot piece equals new board piece to use git component and this is just because I don't want to have to type out git component all the time and the component I want to get is the dot okay so um, yeah so now I want to do piece dot column is equal to I piece dot row is equal to J um, and all dots I J is equal to new board piece to use. So I'm assigning uh, all dots ij to be that new board piece. And then I want to last remove it from my list. So new board dot remove. And I want to remove um, new board piece to use. Okay. So let's just. I stopped commenting because I got a little away from myself. Um, I'm going to make a container for the piece. And this is just, you don't have to do it this way. I just did it this way because I didn't want to have to keep writing all that stuff. Um, assign the column to the piece. And I want to assign the row to the piece. To the piece. And then I want to um, fill in the dots array with this new piece. And then I want to remove it from the list. And because we're removing it from the list, then the next time it calls this, um, like it starts out with 25 pieces. Um, the next time it comes through, it'll have 24 pieces to pick from, and then 23 and 22, because when you remove it, you're also decrementing that count. Um, okay, cool. So for every spot on the board, I did all this stuff. Now that makes a new board. The problem is that new board could still be deadlocked. So what I want to do is check if it's still deadlocked. So I want to say if is deadlocked, then this is where that recursion comes in, where you could have an infinite loop. If it's deadlocked, I'm going to shuffle my board again. Shuffle board. All right, cool. So there we go. That's our that's our board shuffling method. It's going to make a list of game objects, and it's going to add every piece to that list. <laughs> it's going to make a list of game objects, add every piece to that list, um, and then it's going to see if it should be a blank space or not. And if it shouldn't be a blank space, it's going to pick one of those at random and put them down. Um, and then it's going to check to see if it's deadlocked still, and if it's still deadlocked, it's going to shuffle it again. And that could cause this to go infinitely, but I don't think it's going to cause that much of an issue unless you have like a two by two board where you can't have a match. Um, it should be able to should be able to create something that isn't deadlocked. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go up here to my fill board coroutine where I was uh, having that little debug statement telling me it's deadlocked, and I'm just going to call shuffle board. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. 
and I'm going to play until my board is deadlocked. I might need to speed up this footage. I might not. We'll see. Um, I'm going to hit play. Again, I'm still not calling this from when the board is first set up, so it could be set up deadlocked. Uh, it wasn't this time, so that's good. So I'm just going to play. Okay, so I'm just going to play until I get a deadlock and then watch it shuffle. So. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but it found that it was deadlocked and it reshuffled the board. And now it's no longer deadlocked. So let's just, and there we go, did it again. This time it did it with a match on the board though. So we'll have to make some modifications to this to make sure that it doesn't, doesn't do that. Um, yeah, I didn't think about that, about what would happen if it reshuffled with a match on the board, but if it were a bigger board, especially you'd have a match on the board already. So let's actually fix that before we go too much further. Um, so in my shuffle board, do, 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 I already have a method here to find matches on the board that I may, I used when I was setting stuff up. So let's actually just use that here. Um, in my setup method, I have something that I can use just really quickly. Um, I'm going to grab this, copy this, and go down here to when I'm assigning stuff. So what I just grabbed is from the setup method. I grabbed, uh, in the setup method, I grabbed from max iterations down. And I'm going to be using that here when I'm assigning the piece. So make a container for the piece. I'll probably do that right here. So I still want my max iterations. I want matches at, and then I'm not gonna use dots dot to use. I'm gonna use new board and um, piece to use. So I'm gonna say piece to use is equal to random dot range. And I don't want it to be dots dot length. I want it to be new board dot count. And then I'm going to have a debug log my max iterations. Um, okay, so this is just going to randomly choose that piece. Okay, cool. Hey there, uh, this is me from the future. I just need to make uh, two really quick interjections here. First, uh, the way the code is right now, it has an issue. And that issue is that the piece gets assigned here before it might end up being changed. And so that means that you might have a situation where um, you might get like a weird blank space on the board where you weren't supposed to. Uh, so to fix that, we need to take um, the container that we made for the piece. So I'm just gonna take these two lines right here, uh, cut them out from there, and I'm just gonna put them right after the while loop. Uh, that's just gonna make sure that we're not assigning the piece until after we make sure that we have the correct dot that we wanna use. I'm gonna save that. And then in the last video, I had an error up do, 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 in here. And I didn't catch it until um, after I'd already edited it together and YouTube doesn't let you put annotations on the screen anymore. So um, when I was typing it yesterday, I typed this as I less than width and then for the J, J less than width. And I've been, I've been working with a program that needs a square grid. So I'm used to using the same for both of these, but this should be height in case your, um, your grid has two different dimensions. Um, otherwise, this is going to cause some problems. So uh, saving the script here really quickly. I'm going to pop back into Unity. I'm going to make my board really small, 5x5, five five, which it already is in the past because I didn't change anything. Uh, okay, I'm going to pop back into Unity here. I'm going to hit play. And... Okay. Oh, my board is 7x5. Let me change this really quickly. I'm going to make it five by five. Um, and then keep my offset at 10. All right, cool. So anyway, I'll hit play. 
and pieces will slide in and I'm just gonna play really quickly here until I get a deadlock so I might need to speed up this footage and once I get a deadlock we should see the board reshuffle so that should work just fine and there we go so deadlocked board reshuffled and I kinda like that effect where everything kinda finds its new home uh, like that so I kinda wanna keep it like I said you could make a different method where instead of everything finding a new home you just generate a new board, destroy everything that was on the board. Um, you could also make an effect where everything kind of falls off and then new pieces slide in. I like doing it this way because uh, if you have any bombs on the board, those will stay there. So, like, see right there? That column bomb stayed there. Not in the same place, but yeah. Anyway, um, I'll include the GitHub link. Um, a link to a Discord server where you can find me if you have questions um, and any other assets. Next, we're going to talk about how you can use this deadlock system to give your user hints. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, pl please feel free to ask in the comments down below or join the Discord server and ask me there. Um, feel free to give me a thumbs up and you know you can give me a thumbs up even if you, you didn't like it or didn't learn anything. Um, so yeah. I wish you a great day.